Okay, guys, we we can start now. Yeah. Good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to Detect Mining. And as you know that DVCOM is the value added distributor in UAE. And today our session is that exactly what are the models are there? What is the portfolio for Dretech routers? And what are the functionalities? And basically this PPT is especially we prepared for based on our partners and customers. Most of them, they requested us which they need to implement. So based on that, we have prepared and I'm going to share my PPT to you. Just a minute. So let's go and start the introduction of your Dretech router. The first thing is that today's agenda is that we are going to discuss about Dretech portfolio and we are going to talk about what is the difference between port and tag based VLANs, then policy based routing, content security management, VPN, central management, and finally we are going to give you the demo. So in our demo, we have a Dretech 3910 and 2925 routers are there. Then we are going to show it to you certain features, how you are going to configure. And after that, we will discuss about the questions and answers. And if you have any concerns, you can able to ask at any time. And uh, let's go and start about the Dretech portfolio. So first thing is that in the Dretech, we have a different model of routers are there. Basically in UAE, we don't have an internet connection like ADSL and VDSL. So we have a broadband connection like PPPoE or dynamic or static. And for especially small and home users, we have a bay entry level routers and we have a business and broadband connection routers and medium sized router and high performance VPN gateways. So basically we have a multiple categories. So based on that, your requirement, you can able to choose which is going to preferred and which is going to suitable to your requirement. So if you see the Soho broadband connection routers, the first one is Vigor LTE 200N. So the Vigor LTE 200N, this LTE is indicating that you can able to connect your SIM card through your SIM card, you can able to get the internet access. And we have a WAN port as well, and it's going to support up to 30,000 NAT sessions. And by default, it's going to support two concurrent VPN. And this router is going to act as your wireless access point as well. So in case if you want to configure your SSID, so you can able to configure it. So you no need to purchase separate access point. The same router is going to act as a gateway, and it's going to act as an access point, which is Vigor LTE 200N. Especially this router is good, in case if you are in the remote location, if you are not able to get the internet connection, then simply you can buy the SIM card and you can insert the SIM card through your SIM card, you can able to get your internet connection. The second one is that 2915 router. By default, this router is going to support dual WAN, two internet connections you can able to terminate and it's going to support up to 30,000 NAT sessions and you can configure up to 16 VPN tunnels. And it's going to support AC technology uh, as a Wi-Fi, you can able to configure up to four SSIDs. Then after that, the next one is the 2135. It's a gigabit WAN router, and it's going to support up to 50,000 NAT sessions and two concurrent VPNs. And you can configure the AC Wave 2 for wireless. And the other one is that we get 2133 series, which is a gigabit Ethernet WAN, and it's going to support 3G or 4G and it supports up to 30,000 NAT sessions and two concurrent VPNs. And you can, it's going to act as a access point for your internal users. And these routers, we can use it for Soho. In case if you have a small office, you can able to use this. The next one is that small business. The small business routers, especially we get 2927, 2926. And in 2927, we have a two flavors. One is LTE. And if you go with 2927, it, it, by default, it's going to support two WAN interfaces. You can able to terminate two internet connections and 60,000 NAT sessions, 50 concurrent VPNs. And by default, you can able to configure access point as well. You can configure multiple SSIDs. And again, if you go with 2927 LTE series, you can able to insert the SIM card and you can, come, you can terminate up to two physical internet connections as well as you can able to connect the SIM card and a built-in modem is there and 60,000 60, NAT sessions and 50 concurrent VPN and it supports Wi-Fi. And 2926, you can terminate two internet connections, 50,000 NAT sessions 
and 50 concurrent VPN so you can able to configure it and you can able to enable the wireless. So in the wireless, you can able to configure up to four SSIDs for 2.4 and four SSIDs for five gigabytes. And the 2926 is going to available in LTE series. You can insert the SIM card directly and you can able to configure it. And it supports two internet connections and 50,000 NAT sessions is going to support by default and 50 concurrent VPN and it supports Wi-Fi as well. So basically this router, if you have a medium size office, you can go for it. The next one is that if you go with a medium sized business environment, like if you have more than 100 users, you can go for Vigor 3220 and it supports up to four WAN internet connections and 100,000 NAT sessions and 200 VPNs. You can able to configure it. And the latest one, which is 2962, you can able to terminate up to four WAN connections. And this box is going to come with uh, fiber as well. By using SFP, you can able to terminate your internet connection. And it supports up to 300 NAT sessions and 200 concurrent VPNs. And next series is that 2952P. By default, it's going to come with uh, one gigabit WAN and uh, you can use it as a fiber. You can terminate your fiber or you can terminate to the copper. And it has a PoE port size is going to come with this and 60,000 NAT sessions and 200 concurrent VPNs. And 2952, that major difference between 2952P and 52 is it doesn't comes with 2952, it doesn't comes with the PoE and 2952P is comes with the PoE. And by default, it supports one WAN connection and it comes with either, you can go with the copper or fiber. So it has a combo port. In case if you want to terminate the fiber, you can able to terminate it. And it supports up to 60,000 NAT sessions and 200 VPN connections. And there is one more high performance VPN gateway and it supports up to 500 users. And uh, this is Vigor 3910. You can terminate up to eight WAN connections and uh, six WAN connections are the copper connections and two is the fiber and it supports up to 1 million NAT sessions and 500 concurrent VPN sessions. So this is especially if you go with SME level, small and media enterprise level, this is the best solution you can able to do it. And also you can able to customize the ports as per your requirement, either you want to use it as a LAN or you want to use it as a WAN. So this is the one of the very high performance router. The right now it's in the it's available with us in the market and today in the demo we are going to show it to you this router and uh, the console how it's going to look like and how we are going to configure these are the things we are going to see it so the first thing is that port and tag based vlans so the port and tag based reason is nothing bad especially in the Draytech routers by default, each and every port, you can able to configure into different, different networks. So this is, we can call it as a port-based VLANs. So port-based VLAN is nothing bad. You can, bigger router provides multiple IP subnets, which allows different group of LAN clients to use different range of IP addresses. More IP sub subnets are available when VLANs is configured to partitions the LAN clients. So for example, if you see here, we have a router, which is comes with port number one, two, three, four, five. So for example, some customers, they have a requirement, like they want to create separate network for internal staff, and they want to create separate network for their managers. They want to create separate network for guests. In that cases, what we can do, we can able to keep each and every port into the different network. So that is the purpose of port-based LANs. But again, here, I just want to mention one important thing. You can able to, for example, after you are making each port into the different network, you can configure different subnets, but again, you need to go and assign the IP address manually to each and everything. In case if you configure the DHCP, the problem is everybody is going to get the IP address from the same network. To avoid that in your layer two network, if you create a separate VLANs, for example, let's say port number one, I am planning to use it for my staff. Port number two, I am planning to use it for my managers. Port number three, I want to use it for my CCTV. Port number four, I want to use it for my guest. So for example, port number one, if I keep it into the separate switch, I don't have any problem. Port number two, if I connect to the separate switch, I don't have any problem. But if you are connecting to the same switch, if you enable the DHCP, that time you will find some issues. So to avoid that, keep the port number into the same VLAN. Let's say in the layer two network, you can configure like a VLAN number 10, 20, 30, and 40. So port number one, you can keep it into VLAN number 10. Port number two, you can keep it into VLAN number 20. Port number three, you can keep it into VLAN number 30. Port number four, you can keep it into VLAN number 40. 
Then after that, your router is going to act as a gateway. You can configure the DHCP and you can able to allow what are the things you want to allow or you want to deny, you can able to have a complete control. So this is, you can call it as a port-based VLAN. So basically the port-based VLAN is nothing but each and every port in the Dretech router, we are going to keep it into the different network. That is the advantage of Dretech. In case if you don't want to do that, you can keep it as a, all the ports into the same LAN, then you can use it in the single subnet. So either you want, if you want to divide or if you want to use it as a single network, you can able to do that. Then second one is that the tag based VLAN. So if you see here in my picture, we have a layer two switch, which is connected on the Dretech router. In the layer two switch, we configured three VLANs, VLAN number one, two, and three. So through single interface, we are going to carry multiple VLANs information. So this is, you can call it as a tag based VLAN. So the port, which is showing in yellow color, it's going to act as a tagged port. Through this port, we are going to carry the VLAN information for VLAN number one, two, and three. So that the red tech router is going to act as a gateway for the, all these three VLANs. And there you can able to configure the DHCP and DNS. In case if you want to configure any firewall features, you can able to do it. So here you can, config, you can carry the multiple VLANs information through single interface. So this is, we can call it as a tag based VLAN. So by default, it's going to use 802.1Q, which is the protocol which is going to support for tag. As a layer two switch, you can use it for any vendor. It's not, it's not a recommended to use exactly. You can go for Draytech or any, you can go for Cisco or you can go for HP or any vendor you can go for it. Why? Because the dot one Q protocol is the open standard protocol, which is going to support in all layer two switches. So you can configure the VLANs in your layer two switch and you can able to tag those VLAN into the port and you can connect to the router and inside the router, you can able to tag each and every VLAN and you can able to receive the information from your layer two switch. After that, you can able to configure the IP addresses for every subnet and you can configure the DHCP. So basically, Vigor Routers provides multiple IP subnets, which allows different group of LAN clients to use different range of IP addresses. More IP subnets are available when VLAN is configured to, part to partition the LAN clients. With a switch that supports VLAN tech, devices in different VLANs can all, can all access to the router from one LAN port, while the router can differentiate the traffic by the tags they are carrying. So basically when the traffic is going to carry, it's going to carry information along with VLAN tag. That's support of tag based. The next one is that policy based routing. So policy based routing is very important to understand. So especially I just give you some brief idea before we go for the slide. So policy based is nothing but, let's say we have a two internet connections. So as per some customers, they have a separate requirement. So especially the guest traffic should go from your internet connection number one and all internal traffic should go from internet connection number two. So basically what we can do, we can define the policy here. So when the traffic coming from the guest network then should go from WAN one. When the traffic coming from internal network should go from WAN two. And sometimes we have a certain requirement. We need to route our traffic through the VPN. So that for example, I have a VPN between one location to another location, but especially when, when I'm trying to access certain sites, I just want to go through the VPN and I need to access. Even if you want to do, you can able to do that. Even if in case, if one route is failed, then you can able to route your traffic from another route as well by using policy routes. So let's go and see exactly what is policy based routing. While static routing and dynamic routing make the routing decisions based on the des destination. As you know that we have a static routing. Static routing is nothing but manually you are going to add the routes in your routing table. Dynamic routing is nothing but like if you have a RIP, OSP of BGP, these protocols we are going to use to enable the dynamic routing. And these protocols, they are going to work based on the destination. But here through policy-based routing can select a path based on the criteria. So the criteria is nothing but, let's say based on the IP, based on the destination IP, based on the source IP, based on the protocol, based on the destination port and whatever requirement you have it. For example, as I said to you, let's say the guest network should go from WAN one. So otherwise, if I want to go through only HTTP and HTTPS traffic should go from WAN one. So based on the protocol or else if you want to select, the, especially if you are trying to access some destination networks, I want to use WAN two, you can able to do that. So basically this is very good feature that you can able to enable it in a Dredek router. So we can call it as a PBR. PBR is nothing but policy based routing. So you can able to define, you can able to route the policies based on the protocol or source IP address or destination IP address or destination port or destination domain name. Forward interfaces like 
WAN interfaces, LAN or VPN. You can able to do failover support and advanced options is apply net or routing custom priority. You can able to create the priorities as well. Yeah, sir, can you please add uh, comments? So that's a very important feature for policy-based routing. If you want to enable the policy-based routing, you can able to enable it and you can able to choose how you want to route your traffic. The criteria you can able to select either protocol or source IP or destination IP or domain. Yeah. So now if you see here, for example, when, you, when it's in the large scale network, there is a requirement. Why traffic always take WAN2? So the voice traffic, as you know that, it's a UDP traffic. And the destination port 5060, whatever traffic which is coming with as a UDP, and the port number is 5060, we are going to route this traffic through WAN2. And again, the second requirement is that guest LAN subnet only uses WAN1. As I told you that, whenever the traffic from coming from the 192.168.2 network, I'm going to route this traffic through WAN1. So, and I, I want to tell you one more important thing here. Whenever you connect multiple internet connections, by default, your DRATEC router does the load balance. So, for example, if you want to specify, specifically, I want to go my guest network on through WAN1, you can just configure the policy-based routing and you can route all your guest traffic. Here, if you see here on my slide, there is 192.168.2.0 which is belongs to my guest network, I'm going to route this traffic through WAN1. And also if you see the third one, traffic from staff LAN subnet should be sent to firewall gateway on LAN. So if, for example, if you see here, there is a traffic which is coming from 192.168.1. network, then it has to go to the LAN1 specified gateway. So you can able to choose it on which gateway you want to route this traffic. And also traffic to Facebook should be sent to the VPN to bypass internet censorship. So as, a, as Mr. Joman said earlier, if you want to send specific domain traffic like Facebook or YouTube, if you have a VPN connectivity from your branch to the head office or head office to the branch, you can route your information through your VPN tunnel. Mail traffic should be sent to the headquarter via VPN. As I mentioned to you, in case if you want to send your traffic, the mail traffic through VPN gateway, you can able to do it. So basically through policy-based routing, you can able to customize your route policies according to your requirement. The next one is that content security management. So the content security management is nothing but your Vigor router is going to act as a mini firewall. You can say that it has a firewall features as well. So basically Vigor router has a built-in firewall, allows administrator to manage the outgoing and incoming traffic. So as you know that the firewall, it will be like your gateway device, which is which is going to inspect whatever traffic is coming from your internal network and whatever traffic is going out or coming in, it's going to inspect that. So on top of this, you can apply certain rules, certain policies to verification. Ensure the security of local network, prevent network resources being wasted and inappropriate applications. So basically what you can do, for example, some people, they have a requirement that we don't want to allow our internal users to access the Facebook or we don't want to allow to the YouTube. So what we can do when the request coming to the firewall, I can apply there some certain rules should not allow this specific network should not go for Facebook or YouTube. You can have a complete control. Yeah. Yeah, even based on the applications you can able to do. So basically we have a IP filter 
So IP based filter is nothing but it's like a layer three filtering. Based on the source and destination IP address, you can able to filter your traffic. And based on the protocol or port number or country, you can able to do the filtering. And next one is that application layer, which is your layer seven. So if you want to block certain website by using URL or DNS, you can able to block it. For example, certain applications, we can call it as a point to point P2P applications or streaming applications, instant message applications. If you want to allow, or if you want to block, you can able to do it. And denial of service defense, custom threshold whitelist. Either if you want to, for example, so many requests are coming to your network to certain servers, you can able to enable the DOS attacks. And you can able to, in case if the threshold is reaching more than 2000 or 1000, then immediately I'm going to block that connection. So you can able to do that as well. So basically, then in the Dreadic router, you can able to do the filtering based on your IP address or in your application layer or in your DOS. So as I mentioned to you, the IP filtering is the oldest technology. You need to know about the source and destination IP. And based on that, it's like a, it's kind of ACL, access control list. You need to tell what is the source IP and what is the destination IP and which traffic and which port number you need to allow or deny. But if you go with application layer, your job is more easy. Why? Because nowadays, most of the applications, they are keep on changing their IP addresses and all. So instead of remembering those IP addresses, just you can say Facebook block. And simply you can say social media block. There is a certain groups, groups are there. For example, I don't want to allow my team to do uh, to open the games and all. So simply what I can do, I don't know there is a millions of websites or which is related to the games. So simply what I'm going to do, I just select the games, then I'm going to say block. So whenever my user is trying to access the games, then it's going to block. Similarly, it has certain categories like social media and all. Yeah, so do you want to add anything on this? Yeah, that we have uh, that uh, application, layer, uh, application layer filtering is uh, uh, free of cost. There is no licensing at all. We have listed around uh, 50, 57 categories, application, you know, parameters. Uh, so you can utilize um but uh, if you want to use uh, if, if you want to block the website as a category based for example if you want to block social media websites okay so if you want to use the category based uh, uh, filtering so there is a licensing is uh, applicable it's a yearly based subscription uh, uh, there, there is a small charges there so we are using um, the third party uh, integration for that so uh, apart from that, there is no licensing at all. You just need to buy the product. Every features, each and every features are uh, uh, free of cost. And uh, this particular, this uh, content filtering is uh, is working perfectly and uh, hundreds of clients are using. And uh, uh, there is no challenges for the configurations. We can show the demo uh, at last. Right. So basically, if you by default, we are going to support the URL filtering, DNS filtering and application filtering. And for web content filtering, we need to have a license. Yeah. Once if you have a license, then you can enable more features on top of this. So you can able to do as you like. So if you want to enable the IP based filtering, you can able to do it. If you want to do a protocol based, you can able to do it. And if you want to be, block the certain traffic from specific country, you can able to do it. As I mentioned to you, you can do the inspection on layer seven as well. Not only layer three and layer four, you can able to do it, the inspection on layer seven. So the next thing is that web content filtering. So the web content filtering, actually this is, is required a license. So basically allow administrator to control the access to websites based on categories without identifying every URL offers full category options. So as I mentioned to you earlier, there is a certain categories which is already predefined. So those are like games, phishing and fraud, spam sites, shopping, social networking, news. So that for example, if you block phishing and fraud, so whatever sites which is for phishing and fraud already detect they created certain groups and they added those sites so that you can able to block. And also social networking, you know that Twitter, Facebook, certain certain uh, social media and social networking related sites you can able to block it as well so you no need to know which and every website just what you can do just go there and just click on the tick mark and say block then automatically it's going to block yeah and uh, it can block uh, even https traffic as well so there is no, no matter http or https 
So this is the one of the very good feature for web through web content filter, you can able to achieve it. So the next one is that the VPN. So as you know that the VPN is the one of the very important nowadays. It's a virtual VPN network, virtual private network. Let's go and have a look what exactly it does. So bigger router can be the VPN gateway and allows offices which are geographically separated to share the network resources. So basically you can say that the VPN is nothing but communication between two or more private networks over the public network. So this is, we can call it as a VPN. So for example, I have an office in Dubai and one more office in Sharjah. So I want to share some information between the two offices. What I can do simply, I need to, I can, I can enable the VPN. So this kind of VPN, we can call it as a site to site VPN. And second one is that remote access VPN. So the remote access VPN is nothing but the people, the users, the staff, they are going to work from home. Nowadays, most of the people due to the pandemic, they are working from home. So in case if the users, if they want to work from home and they want to access the office resources, you can configure the remote access VPN. Through remote access VPN, you can able to access the resources from anywhere, especially for traveling and all. So we do support all this. We support site to site VPN and remote access VPN. So especially the site to site VPN, if you have your offices into different, different locations, you can able to configure site to site. In case if the users, if they are traveling or if they are working from home, then so those users, we are going to configure remote access VPN. And we are going to support certain protocols for tunneling, GRE, PPTP, L2TP, IPsec, IKE V2, Open VPN, and SSL VPN. And we support the encryption, which is MPP, hardware-based, AES, DES, and 3 days. And PPP authentication, we support PAP, CHOP, MS CHOP, MS CHOP version 2. IPsec authentication, SHA-1, SHA-256, AES-256. And IKE authentication, appreciate key, and X.509 digital signature. So these are the protocols, the standard protocol, which we are going to support. And I just want to add one more information. Important thing is that in case, if you want to establish a VPN between your Dratech and other vendors, you can able to do it as well. Why? Because if you go with IPsec is a open standard. So it's a standard protocol, which is going to use to establish the VPN between one location to another location. Let's say one side, you have a 40 gate, another side, you have a Dratech, you can able to configure the VPN without any issues. Even if you have a Sony call, you can able to do it. Even if you have a Cisco, you can able to do it. So basically we do support all these features and especially in the Dratech to configure the VPN within few clicks, you can able to do it. And uh, so you want to add any other information? On this? Yeah, uh, apart from that, we have a cloud-based VPN uh, solution as well. For example, uh, uh, in two location or a multiple location, you don't have uh, actual public APs. Maybe your router is sitting behind the net or any other firewall so or you don't have any uh, dns or uh, uh, you know that actual public ap so in that case you could use that uh, uh, our free service which is already hosted by Dretech. it's called vpn matcher you can register the product into that cloud account and you can establish the vpn between the sites also uh, that you can configure it uh, on uh, your laptop as well yeah and one more thing is that, especially whenever you go for VPNs, there is a certain challenges. So the challenges is nothing but some customers, they have a dynamic IP addresses. And uh, because most of the people, they don't get the static public IP. In that scenario, what, what you can do, you can enable the free Dyn DNS. And uh, through the Dyn DNS, you can able to establish the VPN. Yeah, Dretech provides uh, one free Dyn DNS account for uh, each and uh, every a router so you can utilize that one it's free of cost uh, that that's why especially if you go with pppoe connection most of the time you are going to get the dynamic ip so the moment when you get the dynamic ip the challenge is that through the dynamic ip you cannot establish the vpn so that's why what we are going to do we are going to register with the dread dns account through that account you can able to use it for your VPN communications. Either you can use it for LAN to LAN or remote access VPN. So that's the beauty of this. And you don't need to buy anything. It's a free of charge. And uh, every year you just renew it. For renewal, you don't need to pay anything. Yeah. Then after that, there is a central management. So central management, you can able to do it from your router itself. You can able to manage your devices like your Dretech switch and Dretech access points. You can able to manage it. 
So if you have, a, if you are in the internal network, if you want to manage your device, you can able to manage through your Dretech router. So Vigor router has a built-in centralized management feature for Vigor AP and Vigor switches. So it's very easy to manage. Yeah. And uh, can you please talk about some ACS? Yeah, uh, we have uh, different types of uh, central management solutions. Uh, which is showing in the screen that is uh, built in a, a router feature. So uh, uh, it, it, there is no charges, it's a free of cost you can utilize in this particular model 2925 or 2927 series up to 20 uh, DRETAC access points you can manage and the DRETAC uh, router will act as a wireless controller in that scenario and you can uh, create the policies and you can uh, you can see the status of the access points and you will get the notification uh, if you want to do the firmware upgradation, backup, restart, whatever you want. You can do it by this central console. You don't need to go to uh, each and every access points and do the config on it. So uh, you can configure and you can manage monitor by the central console. And also uh, you can manage in, uh, uh, in this router up to eight switches as well, data switches then you can manage and you can uh, configure and you can push the parameters to all the switches. You can see the, all the statistics and uh, uh, whether it is up or down, if you want to restart, uh, whatever scheduled restart, it's everything is possible by this console. Uh, apart from that, we have cloud-based solution as well. Uh, if you want to manage uh, hundreds of uh, uh, routers, switches, access points, so we have a ready cloud-based solution with the SD1 technology. So uh, you can, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a license based for device. So currently uh, we do support two models as an edge routers. So you can uh, create the policies uh, from the uh, SD1 platform and you can easily monitor all the traffic and you can uh, control all your one network uh, from the uh, ACS server. So if uh, you have any kind of, kind of project, uh, it's a demo is uh, available and uh, uh, you can uh, come and discuss with us. Yep. So now these are the features most of the time we are going to configure it. And second thing is that, especially in the Dretech, whatever features you want to configure, especially the VPNs and all, it's very easy to configure. And it's a straightforward and it doesn't take much time. That's the beauty of it. And uh, let's go for question and answers or we'll go for demo, sir. What do you think? Yeah, uh, if you have any questions, you could, uh, you could raise your hand or in the chat box. Yeah, if you have any concerns, you just type it in the chat box so that we'll give you the answers for it. Uh, actually, there are hundreds of other features. We we are just focusing uh, uh, two or three features for this webinar. webinar. So uh, it's all the features are as we mentioned earlier. It's free of cost and it's a feature rich pro uh, product. And uh, you can compete with uh, this product and solution with any major vendor in this market. And support also available locally. Okay, can we do one thing? We just start the demo. Yeah. All right, guys. So let's go and start the demo now. So in my lab, we have a true routers. So one is 3910 and other one is 2925. So the 3910, we are going to consider as a site A and 2925, we consider as a site B. So for 3910, we are going to use it for 192.168.10 network. And in the remote location, we are using 20 network. So right now we have a two layer two switches and 3910 is connected to the one of the layer two switch and it doesn't have any VLANs and it's a completely a plain network. And for an internal purpose, we are going to use 192.168.10 network for site A. On site B, we are going to use 192.168.20 network and it's connected to another layer two switch and it doesn't have any VLANs. So let's go and see how I'm going to start my internal configuration. Yeah. So first of all, are you able to see my screen everybody guys? Is it visible? 
yeah let's see that can everybody see my screen yeah right guys so now first of all i am going to access the dratec 3910 router so the dratec 3910 router the default ip address is 192.168.1.1 and by default the dhcp is enabled in this network so but the problem is here the moment when i connect you guys are going to lose the internet connection so to avoid that what i'm going to do now i just give manually the ip address guys let's go and see it here just go to the network and i'm going to specify manually the ip address is 192.168.1.10 so my device and my pc in the same network so that i can able to access it so now i'm going to connect on my dratec router on port number 12 okay then after that what i'm going to do now for testing purpose open the terminal and type 192.168.1.1 so i can have a successful reachability then after that open the browser then type the ip address as 192.168.1.1 so initially you will find the login page and the default username is admin and default password is admin then click login the moment that you log in at first time you will find your router is still set to default password you should change it via system maintenance menu in case if you want to change you can able to change it just go to the systems maintenance then after that click on the administrator password then if you want you can change the password let's go and do that so i'm going to change the old password is admin and the new password is and confirm the password then after that you just go down then click on okay now to verify just log out from the router and type the username as admin and specify the new password then after that click login once you log in here on the top left corner you can see here there is a auto logout see the auto logout what it does if you don't do any if your system is ideal for 3 minutes then automatically it's going to log out to avoid that just make it off then after that you can able to see the nice dashboard guys by you seeing this dashboard you can able to see which interfaces are active and you can able to see what what is the model of your router and which name you given what is the firmware version and what is the system uptime you can able to see it and also what are the resources it's utilizing what is the cpu usage memory usage you can able to see it and by default if you see here port number 12 which is connected to my lan right now my pc is directly connected and here the beauty of this router if you see there is a fiber ports as well p1 and p2 these two ports are the fiber ports and p3 p4 p5 p6 p7 p8 until p12 these are the copper ports and also p3 and p4 they are the multi gig ports guys it's going to support 2.5 gbps and also it has a console port you can able to connect and you can able to execute some commands as well and also the good thing is that these ports you can able to customize it guys that's the beauty of this so customization in the sense you can able to use it as a lan or you can able to use it as a wan so for example if you see here if you go for port number 3 by default it belongs to the wan but i want to use it as a lan so simply you can select lan and again for example if i want to use and also if you see here the moment when i change it automatically it's getting changed and one thing i i just want to mention here for example port number 5 to port number 8 these four ports are belongs to the wan but in case if you select port number 5 as a lan did you notice here all these remaining three ports has changed so the color which is there the same color ports is going to be that's what they mention here the same color the same group so if you see here in the down the same color and same group members of the same group get modified together so that you no need to go each and every port and you can able to do it and there is four ports from port number 9 10 11 and 12 these four ports are belongs dedicatedly the lan you want to say something sir. yeah and uh, about that color coding uh, uh, on the dashboard can i go to the dashboard yeah so this color coding that you could see orange it's indicating 10 bar 100 and green is indicating 1 giga you know that it's it's very easy to identify for example uh, 
maybe your customer is telling okay uh, i have uh, 100 mbps uh, internet connection okay uh, for example 500 mbps internet connection from the provider but uh, in the land client i am getting only 50 mbps or 60 mbps or 100 mbps so here as a system administrator you can easily understand so, okay uh, what is the negotiation happening between isp router uh, the gate on the box and your uh, router if it is uh, indicating green uh, so it is negotiated with uh, 1 giga so we are getting 1 giga from the provider side so uh, many places we see this kind of issues that is why i am mentioning so it's a uh, um, uh, um, by this color coding you can easily understand okay if it is showing uh, the orange maybe uh, and you are, you, you are getting you have a 500 mbps connection so there is a possibility for the uh, you know switch port interoperability between uh, the tractor switch and uh, switch port and uh, isp or in the box that particular switch uh, that port so easily you can identify and you can troubleshoot uh, by this color port yep and by default these ports guys it's auto negotiation mode as you know that if you connected with 100 mbps it will work with 100 mb and also you can able to see these color codes as jomanji said to us yeah next one is that the second thing is that i want to show it to you some of the things guys so the moment when you log in here if you see here go to the system maintenance and by using this administrator password you can able to change your password and also if you want to change your date and time you can do that but right now if you see here i can able to see the wrong date and wrong time because the problem is still I didn't get the internet connection in my device. The moment when you connect to the internet connection, then if you go to the time and date, by default, you are going to sync, you are going to get the date and time, this NTP server, which is pool.ntp.org. Then after that, what you are going to do, you can able to select the time zone, which is plus four for Dubai. So once you do that, then automatically you will get your date and time properly. So sometimes some customers, they don't want to sync with pool.ntp.org. They are expecting to sync with their local NTP server. You just remove this and you can enter the local NTP server. That's it. So the second thing is that in case if you want to take the backup. So to take the backup, if you see here in the system maintenance menu, just click on the configuration backup. You can able to take the backup or you can able to restore it. Then the third one is that in case if you want to reboot your system, you just go to the reboot system. Then you see here, do you want to reboot your router? Just you can select it. In case if you want to go for factory default, then select the factory default, then reboot now. In case if you want to upgrade the firmware, just click on the firmware upgrade and you can able to upgrade it. So for example, if your device is connected to the internet, just click on the check the latest firmware. Then automatically your device will contact the Dretek FTP server. From there, it will check which is the latest firmware for this router. In case if you download it manually, you can able to select it manually the file and you can able to upgrade it to download it manually just go to the dretech website which is www.dretech.com then if you see here there is a support in the support you can just select dretech ftp so it doesn't require any smart net contract or any contracts is not required guys if you know the model number just go here dretech website then go to the support and click on the dretech ftp then after that choose which model router you are going to upload just see here, we got 3910. Then after that, if you see here, click on the firmware. Then after that, you can able to download it as well. So you can able to see the latest one, which is the latest one. Like right now, if you see here, version 3.9.6, which is the latest, 23 March 2021. So in case if you want to downgrade, you can able to do it as well. So this is the way you can able to do it. Better, I'm going to do one thing, guys. I just uh, share you this link in the chat box so that you can able to copy it as well. Yeah, and also release note is there in case if you want to read about what are the latest updates and all you can able to see it. So next thing is that after you log in, you need to, these are the basic things guys. And also let's go to the diagnostics before you are going to configure. If you have some idea about this, it's easy for you to make yourself the configurations more easy. The second thing is that to verify the routing table of your Dretek router. So just click on this right now. I just connected to the only one network. So this is my connected network, which is 192.168.1 network. And we can able to see the code C is indicating that it is connected. And also the DHCP table. This is one more very important feature, guys. So for example, the DHCP is nothing but 
the moment when people when the users they are going to receive the ip address from your dretech router and if you want to know which ip address has assigned to which device you can able to see it and also as you know that your router is going to do the natting if you want to see what are the nat sessions are going on you can able to see it from here and also if you want to do the ping test just go to the ping here and you can type the ip address whatever ip address you want to ping you can able to ping and select the run then automatically you can able to see from your device you can able to get the internet or not so these are the basic verifications before you start doing the configurations so the next thing is that if you see here on the top go to the online status and click on the physical connections you can able to see the status what's the ip address for your lan interface what's the ip address for your wan interface and what is the dns ip what is the router dns you can able to see the primary secondary you can able to do that then now today what i'm going to do now i just want to connect it to the internet first so to connect to the internet guys if you see here there is a wan 1 wan 3 wan 5 wan 6 wan 7 and wan 8 these interfaces are available to connect to the internet and if you have fan one as i mentioned to you it's a sfp plus it's a fiber connection guys if you want to have a 10 gig fiber connectivity you can able to connect it it's a one of the very good feature and again there is a two interfaces are there you can use it for lan or you can use it for wan so right now i'm going to connect the wan 3 which is my copper port it belongs to port number 3 so here i just want to mention one important thing guys so nowadays especially if you are using the dretech router for your home purpose this it's all they are going to provide the vlan ids so most of the time i'm going to get a calls people they used to ask me where i need to add the vlan id so to add the vlan tag just if you go here go to the general setup if you see here there is a wan 3 click on that then if you see here there is a vlan tag insertion by default it's disabled then what you can do just say enable and specify the vlan tag because most of the time whenever you are going to get a router from your service provider it's a plug and play you no need to do anything by default the vlan id everything is configured there so the problem is that the moment when you change the router as a dretech router that router will not come to the internet so that's why what you are going to do you need to go and you need to add the vlan tag here but if you want to know which is your vlan tag you can ask your service provider they will definitely they will tell you otherwise you can just ask your the guy who is going to deal who is going to come to your home to do some kind of configurations just ask them they are going to explain to you then after that to connect to the internet access let's go to the wan 3 port and by default if you see here there is static or dynamic so in case if you have your internet internet connection is a static connection just you can select as a static or dynamic so static means manually you are going to assign the ip address dynamic means it's just plug and play so your service provider will tell you just connect to your device you are going to get the internet connection so in case if you have a pppoe connection just click on this and select the pppoe guys otherwise just go to the details page you can able to see nice view here so if you see here the pppoe connection so this pppoe connection is required username and password so you need to request once your service provider is if you get the internet connection through pppoe you are going to get the username and password from your service provider enter that username and password then click okay then automatically you are going to get the internet access in case if you have a static or dynamic if you see here by default it selected as a dynamic and in case if you want a static just specify an ip address and specify the ip address subnet mask and gateway ip which which you received from your service provider so now what i'm going to do now i'm going to connect to the wan connection guys let's go and see it whether i can able to get the internet connection or not so right now let's see here port number 3 i'm going to connect so port number 3 is connected just go and check it on the dashboard you can able to see the status see here the wan 3 which is connected now but did you notice one thing guys it's showing like orange color which means my service provider side they have a switch which is coming with 100 mbps speed that's why i got it wan 3 and also did you notice if you got any ip address or not go to the online status click on the physical connection see here i got this public ip guys which is 195.229.219.14 actually it's not a public ip which is actually given by me actually i build one uh, mini isp here in my office to show you the demo so i just given this range guys okay so this is the ip address which i got it now and the first step once you get the internet it's always recommends that go to the system maintenance then if you see here there is a time and date 
Okay, now what you can do now, go to the time zone and change it as a Dubai, which is plus four. So let's go and change it now, plus four, then click okay. Now, if you see here, the time is 3.55, it's showing now. Now click okay, now you can able to see it. Now, in case if you want to check whether you are able to reach the internet or not, I always used to go to the diagnostics and check the routing table. Now, if you see here, there is another network is connected. Whenever you get the internet connection from your service provider through DHCP, by default, they're going to inject the default route. So see here, they injected the default route as well. So in case if you want to check whether you can able to access the internet or not from your gateway. So just go to the ping diagnosis, then type the IP address. Let's go and type 4.2.2 .2 and click run. Then click OK now, wait for 10 seconds, it's going to get. If you have an internet connection, then you can able to see there. There you go. Now let's try for again. Perfect. So I have a successful reachability now and I set my date and time. So the next task is that according to our lab scenario, first thing is that guys, Let's go to my lab scenario. I need to give the IP address as 195.229.219.5. So this is the IP address I want to configure it. So let's go and do that. So for, to configure that, just go to the WAN interface, then click on the internet access. Then after that, you can go to the detail space. Right now I have connected on port number three. Just click on the detail space and select the specify an IP address and I want to give as five as per my laptop policy. In case if you want to change the primary and secondary DNS, you can go for it. Let's say that 213.42.20.20 and 195.229.241.222, which is from my service provider. Then after that, if you want, you can change the MTU guys. Sometimes you cannot able to access multiple websites, some of the websites. So due to some MTU sizes and all. So if you want to change, you can able to do that as well. There is no issue for it. So now click on OK. Now my router is going to reboot now. Say okay now. Now keep the continuous ping. Perfect. Now let's go and log in with your username and password. So the first lab, which I want to show it to you guys, as I told you, what is the port-based VLAN? So let's go and have a look. So for the port-based VLAN is nothing but, let's go to the LAN and VLAN. Did you notice here, right now, port number two, port number four, port number nine, port number 10, port number 11, and port number 12. By default, all these ports are belongs to the LAN zone. So in case, if you want to keep port number two into different LAN, port number four into different LAN. You can able to do that. It's very simple. Just click on the enable and select port number 12. Right now my PC is connected on port number 12. So I'm planning to keep it on LAN number one. And port number two, I want to keep it on LAN number two. Port number four, I want to keep it on LAN number three. Port number nine, I want to keep it on LAN number four. Port number 10, I want to keep it on LAN number five. Port number 11, I want to keep it on LAN number six. Then if you see here guys, each and every port, I'm going to keep it in different, different LANs. So port number 12, I kept in LAN one so that I can able to access 192.168.1 subnet. And port number two, which is LAN two means it is 192.168.2. So let's go and do that exactly what's going on here. Say, okay, then click okay now. So let's wait now, it's going to reboot and it's going to come back. There you go. Now type the username as admin and type the password. So now you can see here, go to the LAN and click on the general setup. You can able to see LAN 1, LAN 2, LAN 3, LAN 4. So that now each and every port, you can able to keep into different, different 
VLANs. So in your layer two switch, you can able to do like this guys. Port number two, you can keep it into one VLAN. Port number four, you can keep it into another VLAN. Port number nine, you can keep it into another VLAN. And also here, did you notice one thing? By default, these subnets has already configured. In case if you want to change according to your requirement, you can able to do it guys. So for example, port number uh, LAN two, which is belongs to port number two, I want to keep it into the different LAN, different subnet. Just click on the detail space and change it. There is no problem for it. Let's say that I want to keep it this one into VLAN number 10. So let's go and do that. So let's give 10.1 and the starting IP address. I want to start from 10.11. Then I want just only 50 IP addresses is required and the gateway is 10.1. Then after that, what's your least time? So the least time you can able to do it guys. For example, if you take 3,600 seconds means it's a one hour. If you want to change, you can able to do it. And in case if you want to specify the primary and secondary DNS, you can able to do that 4.2.2 and 8.8.8. .8. Then click OK now, you can able to do it. Let's see here, say OK and click OK now. It's going to reboot now and it's going to come back as much as fast. These are the very, very simple and easiest way guys. You don't need to do anything. It's very simple and easiest way. Now it come back now. Let's go here, enter the username is admin and specify the password. And also I want to show it to you one more thing. The moment when I increase my subnets means I just created multiple subnets to check the routing table. See here guys, by default your routing table is built up. Hope you guys are seeing this. And this is your LAN and go to the general setup in case if you want to change the subnets for remaining, you can able to do it. So this is, you can call it as a port based LAN. So the port based LAN means each and every port you are going to keep it into the different, different LANs. Now I want to show it to you the tag based one. So the tag based one, it's very simple and straightforward guys. You no need to worry about it. So let's say that first of all, you know, you need to choose which port you are going to use to carry the multiple VLANs. So for example, let's say I want to use port number two to carry the multiple VLANs. So simply what you can do now, so I'm going to better, I'm going to do one thing guys to avoid the confuse, just I'm going to reset with the factory default. Then after that, I'll show it to you now. Let's go and do that. So to do the factory reset, just go to the system maintenance and click on the reboot system. Then select the using factory default configuration, then click on reboot now. So now just wait, now it's going to come back. Then after that, I'll show it to you how to do it. Because whenever that's why whenever you are going to design your network, you can decide either you want to go with the port based or you want to go with the tag based. So the port base, each and every port, you can keep it into the different lands. So it will be very good for you as well. You can use the complete ports and you can get the complete bandwidth as well. So the tag based is nothing but the single interface is going to carry the multiple VLANs information. There you go now. Now I'm going to access my router where the default username is admin and the default password is admin. Say okay. Click okay now. It's now the factory default guys. So now anyway, I have connected with the internet now. So I don't have any problem. If you want to check that, go to the routing table. You can able to see it. Now what I want to do now I want to change my date and time. That's my first important thing. I need to make it off. Then after that, I want to change it to my date and time. Then now I'm going to make it as plus four. Then say, okay, now, now you can able to see it. Then second thing is that if you want to do a tag based, it's very simple guys, just go to the LAN and click on the VLAN. Then you can select here, which port you are going to use to carry multiple VLANs information. So just enable it. So let's say that, I want to carry through port number two. So now here, what you can do guys, just select the LAN two subnet and specify which VLAN ID you want to tag. So I want to tag the VLAN ID 10. So make sure that in other side, in layer two switch side, you need to make it as a trunk port. So here, if you see here in the layer two switch side, port number 24 should be a trunk port. So the trunk port, what it will do, it's going to carry multiple VLANs. Let's say that in this layer two switch, we configured three VLANs, 10, 20, and 30. Okay, guys. So now what I'm going to do through port number two, I want to carry that information. So that time what you can do, see here port number two, 
I tag the subnet number two and I enable the VLAN tag for VLAN number 10. Then after that, I want to carry for 20 as well. So I want to assign for 20 sub 20 VLAN, just I want to specify this. VLAN ID is 20 and subnet is LAN 3. Then after that, LAN 3, I want to use it for LAN 4 and I want to tag the VLAN is 30. So if you notice here, port number two, it is going to carry the VLAN's information, VLAN tagging for 10, 20, and 30. For VLAN number 10, we assign the subnet as LAN 2. For 20, we assign as subnet as LAN 3. And 30, we assign as LAN 4. And after that, you can simply click OK. Then say OK. Now, if you notice here, there is a one error, guys. Please set up one VLAN group. See, what about the remaining ports? The moment when you enable this, what about the remaining ports? That's a bit confusing. So what you can do, the remaining ports, if you want to use it in the same LAN, keep it as the same. That's why I, I just want to wait for this warning. So most of the people, when they call me, how you can able to do this, this is the way you need to do it, guys. Because make sure that port number two, I just want to tag multiple VLANs, which is VLAN number 10, 20, and 30. And the remaining ports, I'm going to keep it in the same LAN. Then you can click OK now. Now you can say, okay, that's it. Now it's going to reboot and it's going to come back now. See, P, P12 port, I'm not disturbing at all. Why? Because the P12, I'm going to use it for my communication purpose. If I do something on that, then I'm going to lose the connectivity, guys. That's why I'm not doing anything. And also, if you want to go for deep and you can just visit our, you uh, just go to YouTube and type DVCom technology, you can able to see all the videos, guys, how to configure it. And let's go and log in now. Say OK. So now you can able to see here, go to the LAN and click on the general setup. Now, if you want, you can change according to your requirement. And here through port number two, we are going to carry all these VLANs, 10, 20, and 30. And if you want, you can change the subnets. If you want to change the DHCP and DNS, whatever you want, you can able to configure it. So this is what how you are going to do the tag based and port based as well. So the next thing is that. I want to show it to you how to configure the VPNs. Sir, you can do one thing. You can connect with other device, yeah, uh, with your laptop so that people can see it, that we are going to establish the VPN between, okay, between 3910. Uh, one one, sir, I'll tell you. Guys, just give us one minute time, then I'll just come back. So this is your internet connection, sir. This is your internet connection. And this is the port on sixer now for you you can use this this is your lan yeah okay so now what i'm going to do guys as per my lab scenario i just want to do one thing i'm going to reset now because i have done my tag base now i want i don't want to create any vlans i don't want to tag anything so I want to configure 10.1, 10 network at my Retech 3910, and Joe Manji is going to configure that 2925 for 20 network. Okay, sir. Okay, let's go and do that now. So simply, I just want to do the factory reset. Let's go and do that now. Click on the system maintenance and click on the reboot system. Then using the factory default, just click on the reboot now. It's going to reboot and come back. Then after that, I'm going to change the IP address, guys, according to my laptop policy. See how easy is very simple, guys. There is no difficult at all to configure. If you have the basic knowledge of your routing and switching, you can able to do it. And if you want to see the complete videos about Red 3910 or any of the future, you just subscribe our YouTube channel. You can go through it and you can type it. You can able to see all the videos and it's very easy for you to configure. Let's go and do that, guys. See, it's come back very quick. So let's go and do that. Now click on admin and admin. Let's click here. And one thing I want to tell you guys. So as per my laptop policy, I'm going to configure 195.229.219.5. So this is what I'm going to configure it. Okay, let's go and do that. Sir, I'm going to configure 195.229.219.5. Yeah. So otherwise, so here you can configure DHCP so that you know one side we will configure the DHCP 
20 192.168.20 now don't configure it uh, you can share your screen okay first i'll i'll configure my things then after that i'll share it yeah first i'll finish it guys i can able to show it to you on site a now after that we will see site b okay so first of all i'm going to configure my lan interface so for that what you can do simply go here make it off first then after that go to the lan then click on the general setup then see here by default there is nothing guys i don't want to configure any vlans or any subnets nothing so click on the real space so i am going to say internal network then after that i want to change it as 10.1 and the subnet mask is slash 24 and i want to enable the dhcp so enable the dhcp is 10.11 and i want 200 ips that's fine and 10.1 and I don't want to specify any DNS server, guys. In case if you don't specify the DNS server, then make sure that by default, your DRATEC gateway means the router, the interface IP address is 10.1 is going to act as a DNS server. So say OK now, click OK, then click OK now. So now I can able, I cannot able to communicate it, guys, because you know that because I changed my IP address. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to change manually guys. Otherwise you guys are going to lose the internet connectivity. So 10.10 .10 I'm giving, say apply now. Now my gateway is 10.1. There you go. Then type the IP address is 192.168.10.1. Now I can able to access my Dretech router admin and admin. Say OK now. Then after that, I just want to configure my WAN interface. Let's go and do that. So to configure the WAN interface, just click on the internet access and port number three. I want to configure it as, OK, I want to keep it as 15. Is it fine, sir? Or I want to make it as five as for my laptop policy. I'll stick to my laptop policy. Then that's it. Then click OK now. Say OK. It's going to reboot and it will come back. So wait for a few seconds, guys. Yeah. Perfect. Now I'm going to use my username is admin and my password. Say login. Okay, now, yeah, if, if you guys are having any doubt or any clarification, you can uh, put it in the chat box so, so we can revise. So no problem. You can, uh, you need to understand what is the steps, you know, it's very easy steps. So if there is any doubt, you can ask, please. Yep. So, so far I have completed my site guys. And one more thing, I just want to check whether I'm getting the internet or not. That's very important for us. Let's click on run and say OK. There you go. I have a successful internet access. Now, sir, you can able to share your screen and you can configure it yourself. Yep. And one more thing I want to show it to you guys in case if you want to access your DRATEC router through your WAN interface. So what you can do, just go here, go to the system maintenance. And if you see here, there is a management. Click on the management. And if you see here, hello management from the internet, just put a tick mark on that. Then after that, I want to enable HTTPS server. Then after that, say OK. Now click OK now. Say OK now. Perfect, now my router is going to reboot and it's going to come back. So now I can able to access my router through my WAN interface as well, 195.229.219.5. Now see here, click on advanced, proceed. That's it guys, you can able to do it, but it's in the real time, it's not recommended to do this one. Please don't enable it in the real time because since here I want to access another Dretech router, that's why I did this. And if you enable this, 
some hacker or attacker he can able to access your device and he can able to do whatever he wants it so it's in the real time it's not recommended to do this whenever you want to access your internal resources or your router just give the configure the vpn either ssl pptp or lttp yeah otherwise go through acs take the acs license and it's a completely a centralized dashboard it's a cloud dashboard you can able to access your device from anywhere in the world so now i'm going to access the router now admin and admin and always please change the password as well okay now let's go and access another router okay sir what's the ip address there 195.229.219.70 so right now i'm going to access this router click on advanced say now this is right now if you see guys this is 3910 let's keep it off and this is 2925 and what's the username and password username is admin password is admin the default one now if you see here the moment when you log in at first time make sure that you make it log it auto log out off then after that if you see here by default it got the ip address as 195.229.219.17 that's the ip address which is got it now as per my laptop policy for my lan i need to change the ip address as 192.168.20.1 so let's go and do that first but before that if you see here the internet is already connected guys i want to see my routing table to check the routing table go to the diagnostics and click on the routing table then see here and if you want to check whether you are getting internet or not just click on the ping diagnosis then type 4.2.2 then say run then click ok just wait for 10 seconds then you can able to see the reply from 2925 router if you see there there you go don't worry about it guys yeah let's try again say okay there you go now i want to configure my lan interface click on the general setup it's a similar guys because the dre os is a similar irrespective of if you go for higher model or the lower model it doesn't matter it's a same the configuration so everything is same so i want to change the details page so here i want to change 192.168.20.1 and you want to enable the dhcp server yes 20.11 here i just need only 10 ips and 20.1 and i want to specify the primary dns which is 213.42.20.20 secondary triple two say okay now click okay then click okay now now you can able to see it, the router is going to come back now yes yes still i can able to access it once the router will come back i can able to access because the van ip in case if it is changes the dhcp then you cannot <laughs> There you go. See guys, it's come back. Admin and admin. So now this is your basic step. So the second thing is that as per my today's lab, I just want to demonstrate and I want to show it to you how to configure the VPN, side to side VPN. Okay, sir. Yes, let's go and do it now. So, so far it's everything is fine. I don't have any problem. If you see here, the routing table is perfectly all right. And let's go and check here the routing table as well. So here we are using 192.168.10, which is in site A. And in site B, I'm using 192.168.20 network. And if you see here, as per my lab topology, I have built it now. So now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to establish the VPN guys from 3910 to 2925. And one side, it has a static public IP, which is 195.229.219.5 and other side which is dynamic public ip either you can take it from the dhcp or pppoe it doesn't matter let's go and do it now so first of all i am going to and in the DreTech guys the first thing is that whenever you are going to configure the vpn make sure that one of the site you can consider as a server we can call it as a vpn server and other side we can call it as a vpn client 
So let's say that my head office, I can consider as a VPN server. Why? Because it has a static public IP. And other side, if you have a, you can consider as a VPN client. Okay. And one more thing is very important. At least one side, you should have either static public IP or it should have a Dyn DNS. That's very important, guys. So by default, you can enable the Dyn DNS as well in your Dratech router. It's a free of cost. You no need to pay anything, guys. If you want to know how to enable the Dyn DNS, just go to the applications here. Then after that, if you see here, there is a dynamic DNS. Just click on that. It's single click. Then after that, enable dynamic DNS setup and click on one. But before that, you need to register your appliance. That's very important, guys. Once you register your appliance, just click on the product registration area. Then you can register your box. It's very few clicks. If you don't have account, you can create the account. Then after that, you can log in with that account. By default, it's going to take the serial number of your device and it will show it to you in your registration portal. And there, if you want to enable the Dyn DNS, you can able to enable it. And also the good thing is that if you want to check web content filtering, as I mentioned to you earlier, for web content filtering, you need to pay for the license. In case if you want to test, there is a 30 days trial period is available. You can just enable 30 days trial. Hope you guys are clear what I'm trying to talk. Yeah. So after that, you just click on one. Then here, guys, very important that once you did that registration, then after that, you have to come here. This is your second step. Then here you need to select Dray DDNS Global. This is what you need to select, guys. And one more very good thing is that Let's Encrypt certificate is available, guys. Sir, can you please talk about the Let's Encrypt so that people, they may understand that while they are going to do the hotspot and all, it's very important. So uh, for this uh, uh, free and Dray DDNS host name, you can create uh, one uh, Let's Encrypt certificate for uh, uh, it, it can use for multi-purpose. Uh, it's a valid HTTPS, uh, you know, that it's a certificate. You can generate, actually, Let's Encrypt is a third-party service provider, uh, license provider. So uh, it's uh, uh, integrated uh, with the Dratex. So in a single click, you can uh, uh, integrate with the uh, Trade DNS host name. So this particular certificate, you can use for multiple uh, applications like uh, uh, VPN, um, uh, client or uh, uh, hotspot uh, uh, for for wireless hotspot or uh, 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 like uh, you could see that one now it's showing not secure in the URL you could see we could see that one it's it's showing that there is no license it's not secure so if you enable this uh, uh, this one the service and activated uh, this let's integrate it will be secure. So your uh, all the internet connectivity will be your. Uh, it will be secured by Let's Encrypt certificate. It's yeah. a free of cost. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you guys, if you want to see how it's going to how how it's going to enable it and how it's going to work, because I have prepared one nice video. You just type it TVcom Technology in YouTube, then you can able to see the how how it's going to enable the certificate, how it's going to use it for your hotspot. So you no need to buy any third part certificate, guys. From here, you can able to do it. Take the Let's Encrypt certificate. Yeah. So let's go and talk about our VPN part, guys. Let's clear it out so that are you sure you want to clear. Yes, let's go and clear it out. Then let's first of all, to configure the VPN. Right now, I'm in the server side and 2925 is going to act as a client. So let's go and check it. And before that, I want to show you my routing table. It's clear, guys. See here. You can able to see the routing table. Uh, right now, there is two networks are connected. Once the VPN is established, you can able to see another network here. Yeah. So now click on the VPN and remote access. Just click on the LAN to LAN. So if you see here, by default, this 3910 is going to support up to 500 VPN tunnels, guys. It's a huge. Yeah, if you see here, one to, that, one to 500, total 500 tunnels, you can able to configure it. So now first click on the index number one. So I'm going to create the VPN profiles for each and every location. I'm going to select one, one profile, guys. So I'm going to one, then after that, enable this profile and specify the name. So I'm going to specify the name. Let's say this is my first VPN to 2925. Then after that, then here it's asking, VPN dial out through, what is the port guys? It's very important, WAN3, that's the port I'm using. Then after that, the call direction. So right now I'm going to act as a VPN server. So make sure that you need to select dial-in. So dial-in is nothing but it's a server and it's ready to accept the connection 
from the client. So that's why I selected as a dial in. Then after that, if you see here, there is a two kind of settings are there. One is dial out settings. Other one is the dial in settings. So make sure that guys, the important thing is that whenever you select as a dial in, you need to play on the dial in way. If you see here in this place, you have to play whatever configurations you want to do it, you can do it from here. Don't do it at the dial out. Okay. Because you are a server, just play the settings, whatever you want to do it, do it at the dial in. Then after that, just select the IPsec. That's the protocol you are going to use, either IKE version one and IKE version two. Then after that, specify the remote VPN gateway. So here is the challenge, guys. The remote VPN gateway is that, but unfortunately, 2925 is connected with the DHCP, dynamic IP. We don't know that when the IP address is going to change. In case if the customer is reboot the router, then automatically the DHCP is going to change. Correct, guys? Because whenever you are going to take the IP address from PPPoE, you are going to get a dynamic public IP from service provider. That public IP will change at any time. So it's a big deal for me. So in that case, what you can do, simply you can enter the peer ID, anything you can enter it, guys, red tech. Then after that, you can just simply go to the pre-shared key. Then you can specify the pre-shared key. I'm going to specify pre-shared key here. Make sure that it should be matched in both sides. Then you can click OK now. Then after that, what is your IPsec method? Either it come from, because the remote client, it can come with three days or days or AES, whatever it may be, it's ready to accept. Why? Because I'm going to act as a server. Then after that, you just go down. There is a TCIP network settings are there. Local network IP is 192.168.10.1, which is my IP. And what is the remote network IP, which is 192.168.20.1? and which is slash 24, then click OK now. There you go. Then after that, say OK, guys. Now, if you see right now, it's showing as offline. Because why it's showing as offline? Because I didn't configure it in other side. Let's go and do that. So let's go here. Then after that, I just want to go to the VPN remote access and click on LAN to LAN. Then after that, click on index number one and specify it. And this is my VPN number one for 3910 router. And here the WAN one is the first, which is connected with internet. And here I'm going to use as a dialogue. So dialout is nothing but it's a VPN client and make sure that it should be always on. If it is ideal, the tunnel will become down guys. Keep remember this. Then after that, I need to play here on the dial out settings. So which protocol you are going to use? I'm going to use IPsec tunnel. Then after that, what's the IP address for your server, which is 195.229.219.5. Then after that, what's the pre-shade key? The pre-shade key has to be matched, guys. It's very important. So let's go and do that. The pre-shade key is, and confirm the pre-shade key. Then click OK now. Then after that, click on the advanced tab and make sure that here select your aggressive mode. I'm aggressively trying to access, I'm trying to connect my server. Then what's the name guys? Dread tech, the local ID. Did you remember that? We specify the Dread tech and no need to change phase one lifetime and phase two lifetime. Then you can click okay. Then after that, go down, go down and see here local network is 20.1. What is the remote network, which is 192.168.10.1. Then you can click OK now. Then after that, say OK. There you go. My tunnel is comes up, guys, without any issue. Let's go here. Connection management. See there. How quick the Dredek you are going to configure the VPN tunnel. And see here. Go to my. Say OK here. And see here. The tunnel is there, which is established here through IPsec tunnel. And you can able to see your TX and RX. So it's very simple and straightforward, guys. Yeah. And one more thing is that, as I mentioned to you earlier, so this is what how you are going to configure the VPNs, guys. If you go through our DVCOM YouTube channel, you can able to see it, how to configure the PPTP, L2TP, SSLV, shown all the VPNs, guys. So it's, it's very easy and configure it. And here I want to show it to you. The one more thing is that, that, as I mentioned to you earlier, there will be a PBR, policy-based routing, right guys? 
So the policy based routing, which I told you that either you can able to define the routes based on source IP, destination IP protocol on the service, whatever you want, you can do it, right? Just click on number one here. But unfortunately, I don't have two internet connections in my lab. So I have a single internet connection, just enable this and specify the name and here you can specify the protocol, either TCP or UDP or both. And you can specify the source. And here, the source is any, any is nothing but any source. Or if you want to specify the specific network, you can define it guys. So to define this range or subnet or object or group, just go here object setting and from here, you can able to create the objects, guys. Whatever objects you want, you can able to create it from here. In case if you want to create a service object, you can able to do it from here. I just want to show it to you one thing for, uh, for you to understand. Let's say LAN object. Then after that interface, let's connect to the LAN or you can say any, it's up to you. Then any, so you can able to specify the subnet or you can able to specify the range or single IP address. Then after that, I just want to specify the subnet, which is 192.168.10.1. Then I want to use the subnet mask as slash 24. Then say, okay, now that's it, guys. Then you can able to use it there. There is no problem for it. So to use that, just go back again. Then just click on this. Then you can able to first enable it. Don't forget that and select the subnet and it will ask you, are you can able to define it? Are you can able to specify the object, which is the object you want to use? You can able to select it. It's up to you guys. There is no problem for it. Then destination, you can able to say any, or if you want to create the object, you can able to do it. And destination port is any, and through which interface you are going to forward this traffic. And I selected either a van or LAN, or if you want to forward through VPN, see the beauty of that. You can able to select the VPN as well. In case if it is fail, then you can able to select the failover also. So that's called PBR guys, policy based routing. In case if you want to see more, just go through the YouTube channel, you can able to see it. Right. So the next thing is that we need to talk about the CSM, content security management guys. So if you see here by default, the content security management, we are going to support, as I mentioned to you earlier, there is app enforcement profile, URL content filter, web content filter, and DNS filter. So as I told you that web content filter is required a license. So right now this is not activated. Okay guys, so it's not activated, but if you get a 30 days trial, once you register your product. So to register your product, just go to the product registration and do the registration guys. It's very straightforward configuration. There is nothing to do there. Just enter your username and email address and password. You will get a confirmation email. Just click on that and activate your account. After that, you can log in. And after that, you can register your appliance. Yeah, yeah. And one more thing, guys, the very important thing is that please download the latest firmware from Dretech website and upload it, please. Because this is very, very important uh, recommendation from Dretech itself. So now what I'm going to do now, I just want to show it to you. As I mentioned to you earlier, if you don't have this license, web content filter license, still you can able to block the websites, guys. So I just want to show you that, but in case if you take web content filter license, it's always recommends it's better to take it. If you see here, there is a beautifully, they created categories guys, your job, they made it easy. See here, there is a groups, which is child production, leisure, business, charting, computer and internet, other. You can able to see here, whatever websites, if you want to block simply, you say that malware. So let's say whatever malware sites are there, it's coming under this group. So simply you are saying that select that and in the C you selected here, the action is blocked. You don't need to do anything guys, it's very simple. I want to block everything, social network. I want to block spam sites, hacking sites, peer to peer sites, because people that are sitting in the office, they're trying to download the torrents. The torrents and all it's coming on the peer to peer and phishing and fraud sites and botnet sites, whatever sites, if you want to block, you can just select the group, then that's it. And for example, here, the child production is completely blocked and I don't want to allow to anybody to the games and I don't want anybody to job search and sports. So whatever you want it, you can able to create it, just you can specify the name. So by default, I'm just playing on the default. In case if you want to create the new one, you can able to do it. In case if you see here, there is some nice uh, box, it's showing block or whitelist. So simply you can say pass and you can write it in case if you say some of them, you want to allow it. 
even still you block but i want to allow the facebook and youtube you can able to do that you can simply write this yeah there is a question over there yeah so this is what guys and let's go to the url filter and when i'm going to finish it out my session guys just give me five to ten minutes i'm going to finish it out so to configure the url content filter just go here before you are going to configure just go to the object setting then clear create keyword object here then after that say number one let's say i want to block the facebook so i am saying that facebook then after that you can specify here total three words guys so i am saying that facebook.com and i am saying that facebook and fb because this is in case if you don't take the license you need to take you need to do manually like this say okay now so see here facebook then after that what you are going to do if you want to create a group you just create the group and join this guy so let's create something interesting let's go and do that and i'm going to say social media blocking okay guys then after that let's go and add this and say okay now that's perfectly all right then after that what you are going to do now so so far i have done this then in case if you want to add any additional things you can able to do that as well so let's go here and click on the url content filter profile just click on this number one i'm going to say facebook block okay otherwise i can say social media block then after that if you see here the priority url access control then select this and make it as a block and specify that object guys that's it so i'm going to select that group then after that click okay now then say okay that's it say okay now then after that you need to apply this so for what you are done you just configure this but if you want to block http sites as well it's very important go to the dns filter and do that as well so i'm going to say sm block yeah this is for dns then after that you just select the url content filter is this block only say okay now then after that i just want to enable this i want to enable the url as well then after that just say okay no need to worry about that that's it then after that final step is that go to the firewall and click on the filter setup then click on the default data filter so here by default if you see here netboys is blocked so now what i want to do select the number two then enable this then i'm going to say block social media then land to the direction is land to van source size is any and destination is any service type is any then in case if it is finding url filter yes yes multiple yeah here yeah, yeah but at the moment i don't want to because for every day i'm going to block in case if you want to block the particular subnets you can just create it guys that's the beauty of this yeah just click on the edit and if, by the way you can able to see that youtube video and you can able to understand how to do it then after that simply you can go to the url filter and select this sm block and select the dns filter then if you want to see the logs just select it and say okay that's it guys so the moment when it's find it out immediately it's going to block rest all the traffic is going to allow by default yep this is what and by the way where you can see the logs this is one more important interesting question guys to see the logs go to the diagnostics then if you see here there is a syslog explorer just go there and enable web syslog and after that whatever you want to see the firewall you can select it and say refresh you can able to see it guys so this is the overview of the complete retech and it's very easy to configure it and it's very straightforward configurations so i'm just waiting for your questions guys if anybody have any questions please raise your hand i'm ready to give answers for it any questions guys so this is what exactly how the content security management how your firewall rules and how your port based and tag based and vpns and by the way we have every saturday there is a training will be there guys in case if you need a training just speak to your account manager you can contact can we allow participate particular sites with wild card yes you can able to do that yep 
because it's always i recommend to enter manually sometimes you may do the mistakes guys yeah we'll get a, will we get a copy of this session yeah we can share it with you sir no issues mr mohammed who is the account manager from our team who is your account manager sir vishal yeah no problem sir we will share it with the vishal and you can take it from him no issues yeah vishak vishak okay i'm sorry for it yeah no problem sir any question so far now mohammed if you want to test you can take the appliance and you can test it no issues we are ready to help you out yeah we don't have any problem if you want you can come on saturday and we just give you the real devices you can play with it and also some people they ask me one more they didn't ask me one more question that is if you have a multiple vlans and how you are going to access through your vpn tunnel so that is also you can able to do it guys because i forgot to show you that let's go and have a look one time guys that's also very important because uh, sometimes if you have a multiple networks if you want to access through vpn just go to the vpn and remote access and click on land to land and see here in the down there is a more is there right the remote network right now you mentioned only one and click on this and add your multiple sub networks the remote sub networks guys so it's very simple and straight forward and also we support hub and spoke also if you want hub and spoke within few clicks you can able to do it yeah this is very simple and straight forward guys yeah any other question so far so can we close the session guys anything any comments so far yeah yeah it's answered yeah i have four sip trunks from telco and i have isp for internet i have my ip pbx on my lan and i want to wipe traffic and help <laughs> of course if you have a vpn configuration whatever you want you can do it man no issues through vpn you can able to do it right yeah yeah uh, the stephen you know that uh, actually yeah that your question about the pbs trunk you know it's a, it's not related with the router actually right yeah. it's a, you need to configure the sip trunk on the pbx end it's a, anyway you know our appliance uh, it's uh, complaints with the voip uh, you know it will pass the voip traffic and all. there is no problem if you want you can create the uh, voip uh, qos quality of service so you know you can reserve a particular bandwidth uh, or uh, you know that particular uh, 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 that bandwidth for the voip traffic so that we can do it by the router but uh, for the sip trunk configuration it's uh, it's uh, uh, your pbx uh, uh, side configuration thank you so basically if you have a four different locations also you can able to establish the vpn between them after that if you keep a pbx in each and every location you can configure the p trunk or sip trunk between them and if you want to route your traffic you can able to route it as they actually yeah in case if they want to go with because this is one of the interesting question because some people they have a multiple locations if they want to share the voice traffic anything else any questions guys so far any questions guys so far so thank you very much we are going to close the session now if you need anything just you can and make sure that very important information is that you need to upgrade your routers guys the latest firmware is available in your dretech ftp site you can able to download from there and you can able to upload it so it's very straight forward yeah yeah whoever registered their their products in my bigger portal uh, you know those guys uh, in the registered email they received one uh, uh you know activation link maybe if it is not coming in your inbox uh, you can check it uh, in our uh, in your spam folder okay then you need to activate it 
and you need to upgrade the firmware uh, also for actually you know that uh, between the cp and my bigger portal we uh, that the threat attack has changed some uh, security parameters they put more strong you know that uh, security case okay thank you have a great day thank you very much thank you guys thanks a lot bye sir uh, they are asking to share this video so we we, we need to share it with them as well